Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. This is a show that broadcasts every Thursday from 2 o'clock to 2.30 uh, from the beautiful studios in downtown Honolulu. Uh, we go live uh, at 2 o'clock. You can catch us on the livestream.com uh, or just go to the Think Tech Hawaii uh, website and we're there. Uh, if you'd like to tweet us uh, a message or a question, uh, we can uh, accept those. And if you wanted to call in, our call-in hotline is 415-871-2474. Uh, today we have another success story, uh, a millennial that has been very successful uh, for a long time now, actually. Uh, I've known Jennifer for a few years and, and I've kind of followed her career and she's done very well. Uh, she's currently the uh, Executive Director of Development for the Salvation Army, and she's the Chairman or the President of the Young Professionals uh, Group at the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. So Jennifer, welcome. It's good to have you on, on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you've accomplished so much, but but tell us a little bit about your background. Are you, uh, were you born in Hawaii or? I was actually born in Kumamoto, Japan, and I was adopted um, at 10 months, and I, my parents brought me over to Hawaii, and Very that good. was raised here. So you were, you were basically raised in Hawaii then? Mm -hmm. Whereabouts in Hawaii? Uh, we were living in Manoa. I grew up right up the street from the Salvation Army, where I work now. Uh -huh. And when my dad retired from the federal government, we moved out to Hawaii Kai. Very good. So in Manoa, I, I guess you lived there for a long time. Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. um, I guess uh, a lot of education influence in, in that neighborhood. Uh, where did you go to school? I went to school at Hawaii Baptist Academy from second grade through 12th grade, and I loved right. it. Yeah. That's good. Now, that's that, that's not just a, a girl's school. That's both, right? It's co-ed, yeah. yes. And then I, when I graduated from Hawaii Baptist, I went on to the University of Hawaii. At Manoa. At Manoa. Very good. All right, that's uh, my alumni, too. Alum. Alum, that's my former university, <laughs> so I'm an alumni from uh, UH as well. So, uh, so you, you went to University of Hawaii, and then from there, what did you do? After I graduated from UH Manoa, I needed a job, of course, mm -hmm. and I was very lucky in the sense that I kept in touch with, I was doing work study at Hawaii Baptist, and I was lucky enough where I still kept in touch with uh, my supervisor at the time. So when I graduated from college, I called him and I said, I need a job. Do you have anything for me? And he said, actually, uh, I'm looking to start an alumni relations program. Would mm -hmm. you be interested in um, starting that? And I said, sure, absolutely. So that was my first job out of college. Well, very good. It's nice to have those connections. Yes, definitely. Yes, never burn any bridges. You don't know when you got to no. reconnect. Hawaii is a very again. small community. They are indeed. And just out of curiosity, what was your major in uh, at the university? I majored in Asian Pacific Literature and wow. English. Yeah. Wow. So you could actually teach English if you wanted to? I could. All right. Well, if you want to offer some pointers, <laughs> feel free to do so. I'm still a student of English myself. So. Uh, and so then you worked there for a little while, and, and how long were you there? I was there for four years, and I um, grew the alumni relations program, and it was just, it was a lot of fun being able to go around the country and meet our alumni that supported. Wow, so you Hawaii got Baptist. to travel a little yes, bit Yes, I then did. Too. Yeah, it was right. fun. And uh, after, I grad um, after I finished that position, um, I really got a, um, I was started to become really interested in what the world of fundraising was like. Mm. Um, because I wanted to see what really drove people to want to make a significant impact for um, an organization that they were passionate about. So that led me to going back to the University of Hawaii Foundation and I did fundraising at UH Manoa at the law school. It's a tough job, isn't it? It is a tough job, but it is very rewarding and I, yeah absolutely love being able to meet all kinds of people. You do get to meet a lot of different people, you know, and, and I've been involved in a lot of nonprofits and, you know, in different capacities and, and sometimes as the chair of the organization. And a big part of that job is to go out and try to raise <coughs> funds. And it's, uh, it's awkward sometimes, at least for some people, uh, and it's tough, um, but it is rewarding when you're able to pull it off. When you're able to align a donor's passion to the needs of an organization, mm -hmm. nothing can be more rewarding than that. And that's what I really love about fundraising. Yeah, and I guess I have learned that it's always important to be able to write the, ask the right person too. 
you know. Yes. So, you know, usually I like asking people that have money. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. And so you were you were at the uh, University Foundation for a while, um, and I, I know you're the current chair of the YPs for the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. So when did that all happen? When did you get involved with the YP program? I was lucky enough to get started with the YP program back in 2011 when it first started. Right. And uh, I was still, I think I was with the Arthritis Foundation at the time. I had transferred to a new position and uh, I had a friend say, you know, I'm, I'm starting this program at the chamber and I'd love for you to get involved and have your insight on how we can get more young professionals involved with the Chamber of Commerce. So I said I would absolutely love to do that. Very good. And that was in 2011. And I remember at that time I was with HMAA and I think we were one of the original sponsors for the yes. YP program. And so we were also there with you and watched this grow over the years. And it started, I guess, with zero and it has built up from, from there. And, and now you're the chair. What, what's the numbers now? We are over 200 members now, which Excellent. we are very proud of. And yeah. that's really thanks in part to many of our sponsors like HMAA. Um, but the program has just grown exponentially in the sense of um, the programs that we offer for our young professionals that I really don't think that you can find any other with any other organization. And we have a new executive director who is leading the young professionals, so we're really grateful for our Bianca. Oh, that's Bianca. She's yes. the executive director. I've heard so many wonderful things about her. She's fantastic. Yeah, she is. Um, why don't you just, for, for the viewers who maybe not quite know what the Young Professional Program is, can you just spend a minute and explain to you know the, the, the viewers out there what the, the Chamber's Young Professional Program is all about? Well, the Young Professionals Program really gives the young professional an opportunity to not only network with community leaders, senior and community leaders, but it provides opportunities for professional development and growth. And that's really one of the things that I've appreciated about the program. We have uh, great networking events, oh, yeah. of course, YPs love networking events, yeah. but we also um, have opportunities where we can sit down one-on-one -on -one with community leaders like yourself and um, business leaders and just have an opportunity to talk story with them and um, learn from them and learn how they um, do business in Hawaii. Well, and these are opportunities to interact and, and share ideas with some of these uh, ex more experienced uh, chamber members that they would maybe never have had an opportunity to do anywhere else. Exactly. You yes. Know, and so I've gone to some of these events, and they've always been well attended. Uh, the enthusiasm and the energy is is at a very high levels. The energy is really high level, which I really I love. Um, one of the other things that I've appreciated about the Young Professionals Program is that the friendships that I've been able to develop over the years with my peers um, is going to last many more years to come when we become those next generation of leaders in the community. Uh, so building that relationship now has been um, truly meaningful. And people can never underestimate the value of those connections and that networking because, you know, if you flash forward 10 or 15 or even 20 years from now, uh, some of the po folks that you're dealing with right now and you've got these relationships, they're going to be in much different positions. Yes. And it's, it's going to be valuable to have those connections when you need them. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. They're going to be... Uh, you know, helping to create new laws. They're going to be um, the ones that are donating all of the money to the Salvation Army. Aha, fundraising. Here we <laughs> go. <Exactly. laughs> so it is important to um, start building those um, foundational relationships. That's right. Well, plus, you know, in addition to that, there's also experiences that people are going to have that are going to be maybe different and unique in a lot of ways. And, and to maintain that relationship and be able to you know, tap into that experience, you know, and having these special type of advisors that you can go to. I mean, that's all part of that group that you're, you're working with as you grow up in, into the business community and take higher and higher responsibilities. Absolutely. You know, it's, um, and then again, that's, uh, you can never underestimate the value of that. You know, and I still tap in. I have a, a friends now, of course, they're older but they have valuable insight. Mm -hmm. And I'll bounce things off of them all the time and get their thoughts and their opinions and, and maybe hear something that maybe I didn't quite think about before. Right. And so that peer group uh, support is, is really important. That's exactly what it is. It's a group of support that um, I know I can 
count on them for advice and to look for um, just running my ideas, you know, mm -hmm. past them. And it's been it's been a very meaningful experience for me. Well, and we're a com diverse group of people, so um, being able to hear different opinions and um, perspectives is has been meaningful. Well, and and what they're calling, I think, the Exec Connect program uh, is where you get this very dynamic group of people to interact with the different executives yes. that you've already mentioned, but also getting their perspectives. And, and sometimes these uh, more experienced people can actually end up being like a, a mentor and advisor to some of the folks within the program. As a matter of fact, don't they have a mentorship type of program available? We are going to be starting a mentorship program, Mentor Hawaii, in the fall. And that is another, just another um, benefit, I think, of the YP program because you have this one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with senior level executives in mm -hmm. the community that you wouldn't have access to normally. Uh, so that's, you know, being able to ask questions in a comfortable, confidential setting, I think, truly has um, a huge impact. It, it could have clearly a huge impact but also sometimes it's a more safe environment to ask some of these questions that you know you may be dealing with a, an issue that in the company that you're with mm -hmm. uh, and you don't really want to ask the boss yet you yes. know you want to kind of do a little bit of research first and reaching out to somebody who's maybe been in that position before and getting their thoughts uh, could really help guide you in, in making a right decision absolutely there's been many times where um, as a YP chair, I have the opportunity to sit on the board of directors for the chamber. And there's been many times when I've been able to, I feel comfortable enough to pick up the phone or send an email mm -hmm, to one mm -hmm. of the board of directors and say, um, you know, what do you think about this? Or do you have time for coffee because I have um, an issue that I want to run by you and I think you provide great perspective. Uh, so that's been phenomenal for me. Right, no, and that's something that people need to be comfortable to do. Don't be shy about it because that's every time, and I've been to the Exec Connect a couple times, and every time I go there, I expect that to happen, and I want to have those kind of connections, and, and so don't be shy. It's, it's what they're hoping for. But, you know, we're going to be coming up on a, a short break, uh, so okay. we're going to take off for about one minute, uh, but we're going to be right back. We're talking with Jennifer He who is the chairman of the Young Professional Program at the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii and also has a very active role in the uh, Salvation Army as the Executive Director of Development. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Thank you. Pumped Hydro, that's the word. We just had a great show on Hawaii, the state of clean energy uh, with uh, uh, George uh, St. John and Ray Starling. And we're talking about how, how, uh, how Pumped Hydro or Hydro in general could affect uh, our clean energy initiative. So what do you guys, how did it go for you? George? Uh, went great. <laughs> you don't look like George. <laughs> went, went great. Yeah. I think it's that's it. one of my favorite things. You seem so excited about this. Well, well I've been he, at it a while. <laughs> <laughs> he's been, I was just going to say, he's been at it for a while and he knows more than, uh, than uh, we will ever know about true. Uh, clean energy. We really got to him be. to tell us, yeah. too. We got information out of him and we got his true, you know, his true thoughts. And uh, now he's going to tell us how he really thinks. Go for it. <laughs> That's what you said before. Anyway, thank you, Ray. Thank you, George. You're welcome. We'll do this again. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here with Jennifer He today. And we're going to be talking, uh, we've already talked about the Young Professional Program at the Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is a very valuable program that uh, they've got over 200 members uh, and I think they could probably accommodate up to another 200. So um, sign up for this as soon as you can, as quick as you can. Uh, but we're also going to be talking a little bit about the Salvation Army, which is her day job where she actually uh, gets a paycheck for it. Um, but uh, just to wrap up on our conversation with the Chamber and the YP program, you're uh, the outgoing chair. You're going to be giving that position up, but you've had it for, what, one year? I've had it for two years. Two-year yes. term. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so it must have been a very interesting. Any, uh, anything you want to share about your term there? I mean, any uh, exciting things happen or going to happen? 
It was a very exciting time of growth for the Young Professionals program and I think one of the things that I appreciated the most was getting the support from the Chamber of Commerce for our program. And you know the Millennials represent the largest um, group in the workforce mm -hmm. now. They do. And uh, for the Chamber to recognize... And they're going to be paying the bills for the older guys too yes. as they get older. Yes. So, and they're an important group. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's time we paid our dues, right? So. Um, but that's one of the things that I really appreciated from the Chamber was getting their support for our program. And what's interesting is that not only does it provide opportunity for the, the young professionals to get engaged, and I guess the young professionals is defined as anybody under 40? Anyone under 40, yes. 40, okay. 21 to 39. 21 to 39. Yes. Um, but they also have an opportunity to get involved in the actual organization itself in a different you know, management or leadership uh, role because you've got different committees, you've got committee chairs, you've got a, an organizational structure mm -hmm. that a lot of the members of the young professionals can actually get engaged and get some good experience from, don't they? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think one of the great experiences also for me has been being able to chair certain committees like mm -hmm. our events committee and our, um, we have a events committee, membership committee, mm -hmm. sponsorship. Mm -hmm. and so being able to uh, lead a group through a meeting has been a great experience for me mm -hmm. and being able to take everyone's opinions and thoughts and um, kind of guide the program has been an awesome experience for me. It's not always as easy as it looks. Is no, it? it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Well, and, and I remember that, um, and I'm sure you know Jacob, Jacob No. Yes. You know, he was uh, HMAA and, and he was uh, one of the, the people that I really wanted to get involved with the YP program and, and so I, I've been watching this you know with, with, through Jacob and, and watching you and it's uh, really both of you have developed very well over the years and Thank you. and uh, you're certainly positioned now to really do some exciting things for the rest of your career and I, I think a lot of that experience is because of the uh, YP program. Absolutely and I think Jacob really represents um, the type of young professional that we're looking for in our program. We want someone that is passionate about wanting to um, raise up the next generation of leaders and provide professional opportunities, but also have fun, you know? Mm -hmm. We're here to have fun mm -hmm. and we're, we're here to learn from other people, so. Well, that's good. That's why I like the group so much because whenever I'm there, I always have fun, so. You're an honorary <laughs> young professional <laughs> member. Well, be, based on age, I can be a member twice, right? <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. And uh, you're now in your day job, you know, that you're, you're focusing a lot of your daytime hours mm -hmm. at, uh, is with the Salvation Army. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about, first of all, what is the Salvation Army and what are you doing in that organization? Well, the Salvation Army is one of the largest uh, social service nonprofit organizations, uh, not only here in Hawaii, but across the world. We're in 127 different countries. Wow. And here in Hawaii, we serve over 121,000 people just in the state of Hawaii. That's a huge part of the population. It is, it's one, one out of 10, yeah. almost, yes. Wow. So 121,000 adults and 23,000 children that we serve every year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And when you say serve, what does that mean? How do you serve them? We have a number of programs. I think a lot of people don't realize what exactly the Salvation Army does. Mm -hmm. Once they put the money into the red kettle, they don't know where the money goes. But uh, we actually provide uh, drug and alcohol Wait rehabilitation. Minute, I thought I was giving that money to Santa Claus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. You're doing good by putting money into the kettle. Uh, so when they put the money into the kettle or when they make a donation to the Salvation Army, it goes to support our programs and services. So mm -hmm. you're providing um, food and rental assistance uh, for those in need. You're providing drug and alcohol wow. rental assistance too. Yes. Wow. So people that have gone through our programs, you know, one of the things that we find is most important is connecting people to a new, um, to a job a house and a connection to a new community. Mm. And when they go through our program, those are the three questions that they ask themselves is, who's gonna hire me? How am I gonna get mm -hmm. um, a place to live? And who are gonna be my new friends? And so that's mm -hmm. what really mm -hmm. the Salvation Army is for. Really, and so this is a, an ongoing support that you provide all year long, not just during the holiday season. I mean, this is something that's going on all the time. Yes, what we say at the Salvation Army is that need knows no season. Exactly, no, mm -hmm. that's true. Uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes when you're out of the season, when you need it the most, there's not that much support out there. Yes. You know, 
Exactly. During the summertime really is when a lot of the children um, in Hawaii go hungry because they're not getting the food, mm -hmm. their breakfast and lunch at school. So that's where the Salvation Army comes in. We provide um, camp opportunities for these mm -hmm. kids and we also provide hot meals for uh, the Keiki and their families. No, that's excellent. Now, if there was somebody out there that needed to find out more about the organization and how to get, you know, take advantage of some of these services, where could they go? We have a number of different, what we call cores across the island, uh, but they can go to our website, hawaii.salvationarmy.org, okay. or they can call um, us at 988-2136. 2136. Yes. 808-988-2136. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, we might, I might have to ask you that question again later, but, um, you know, so they can call in or go to the website. There'll be information in there about how, where to go and how to sign up mm -hmm. and, and what some of these support programs are. Exactly. All right. And do you have people to actually go out into the community and, and educate and create awareness or? We do. Well, that's part of um, the responsibility of my department. Uh -huh. And I work for the, um, I'm in charge of the development department, so we really are the ones to educate the public about what the Salvation Army mm -hmm. does. And we have programs and services across all islands and um, in Micronesia and throughout the Pacific Islands. Really? Uh, and is that based here? Yes, it's based here. Well, wow. we have um, our officers, Salvation Army officers there, okay. um, but the headquarters is based on Oahu. Wow. Cool. So this is this is really a, a almost a Pacific region type of position for it you. It is yes, yes. Oh, it's a huge uh, it's a huge step for me in the sense of um, I'm really learning more about management and administration mm -hmm. and being able to manage a huge budget. Very good. Well, and define huge. How big of a budget? Are you allowed to talk about that? Or? <laughs> well, I, I can say that uh, the Salvation Army raises over $36 million a year, and um, but that all goes towards our programs and services. Sure. But you're, you're one of the key players in creating the awareness and, and doing that fundraising, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like your budget. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very good. And so what, um, how has and I'm trying to provide some linkage here, but how has the Chamber YP program helped you do your current job at the Salvation Army? Well, like I, um, I think I mentioned before that um, with the YP program, I've really been able to kind of learn what my strengths and my weaknesses are. Um, managing meetings was not one of my strengths, and that's that's what I was able to practice through good, the YP good, program. Yeah. Um, but with the YP program, I have, because of the relationships that I've been able to mm -hmm, build mm -hmm. um, over the years, the YPs have really supported me in the positions that I've been in my professional career. And so we've had a lot of YPs come out to um, events that I've mm -hmm. um, run and right, provide volunteerism right, right, opportunities. Right. And I think that's really where um, I have seen the most benefit. That's great. That's, and, and so there's, there's a nice, I'll use the word maturing of your experience and your, your knowledge of, of how to do things by blending these two together and being able to, to kind of pull from, from the two different areas to, to make the, the professional that you become. Yes, yeah. definitely. And I would imagine that uh, you know, there would be other types of opportunities at the Salvation Army to further sharpen and polish your skills. And I, I would imagine they have some sort of a, a training program that uh, you're, you can tap into. Uh, through the Salvation Army? Yes, yes we do have a um, professional development program at the Salvation Army. And one of the things that we recently started was a group called Echelon. Mm -hmm. And it's really to mobilize the next generation of leaders to get involved with the work that the Salvation Army does. So we also have a young professional group with the Salvation Army that is super passionate about doing things for the community. Very good. And these are the ones that might do some of the heavy lifting to actually get out into the community and work with people? Yes. Yeah. And they help out with, um, right now they're running a back to school drive and we're supporting Title I schools in the DOE. And they're, uh, we've collected over 60 um, backpacks and we're wow. going to be able to stuff them and pass them out to students. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been a lot of fun. Now, are there particular areas in Hawaii that you focus 
focus most of your efforts. I mean, you know, we, we just had a discussion uh, earlier this week about um, different parts of Hawaii being underserved as far as medical services are concerned mm -hmm. and, and, and the needs that they have out there. But has the Salvation Army identified certain areas in Hawaii that a little extra attention has to be paid to? That's a great question. Um, I would say no, because we serve every zip code in the state. Okay. So um, no matter where you are, there's going to be there's a Salvation Army. Yeah, there's help mm. available. The Salvation Army is going to be there on the ground. Yeah. And our doors are open to everyone. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's a great organization then. Um, now, part, part of your role is uh, you know, development. And so, and your background is on the funding side. Right. So, what type of funding opportunities are there at uh, the um, the Salvation Army? I mean, you do what kind of fundraisers do you do? We have one large fundraiser a year, which is called our Partners in Community Service Gala, and that's an opportunity for the Salvation Army to recognize community leaders and community organizations that have really supported us throughout the year. And the work that we do would not be possible without um, companies that step up mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. want to make a difference for the community. So that's our annual gala where we honor community leaders. And we have one big event that's coming up soon in September. It's the first time that I think anyone has done this in the state. And it's called our CEO Sleepout. And a CEO Sleepout. Yes. Mm. And it's open to CEOs, but also community leaders. And it's an opportunity for these business leaders to experience homelessness for one night. So we invite our community leaders to sleep out for one night in the Hawaii State Capitol Rotunda. And they'll learn about the programs and services that we have across the state. But we'll also have a time for them to share with us how they want to make a difference. What do they see needs to be done um, to fight homelessness here in Hawaii? Well, it's a big job, you know, and there's there seems to be a lot of effort in trying to address the issue. Um, but there, there seem to be fragmentation, you know, a lot of different people trying to do different things. This sounds like an opportunity to maybe bring everybody together yes. and try to start coordinating it a little bit more. Yes, definitely. We have a lot, there's been a lot of symposiums going out there in the community um, from trying to get nonprofits together, trying to get the city, you know, to work with nonprofits. Um, but this is, I don't think we've, there's been anything like this where mm -hmm. the high level um, policy makers and um, decision makers and businesses can come together and mm -hmm. tell a nonprofit, the leading nonprofit, um, how they want to see change. Right. So it sounds like an excellent opportunity. Now, we are running out of time. We're going to have to close here, but what date is this scheduled for? So our CEO Sleepout is happening Friday, September 16th through the 17th. 16 to the 17th. Yes. So I'm going to have to talk to my wife and make sure I get a pass for that night. <laughs> I usually don't, but I'm going to ask her anyways. All right. <laughs> Very good. Well, Jennifer, it was a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you. Um, looking forward to doing this again sometime soon and maybe after the, uh, the CEO sleep out or overnighter or mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be able to get together and you can tell me how well it went. Take some pictures. We can put it on the show. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We air every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we talk about success stories in Hawaii, and there are many of them. Jennifer, he was just one example. I uh, hope to see you next week. Aloha.